Welcome to the Money Vikings Podcast, where we conquer financial freedom. Join Greg, Jerry, and Bob as they discuss everything investing and personal finance. The Money Vikings Podcast is hosted by three dads who are doing what they can each day to burn down debt and build wealth. Learn the path to true wealth. Their podcast and website, moneyvikings.com, is a treasure trove of ideas. So without further ado, here they are, the Money Vikings. Oh, jar of pickles. Why do you cost me so much more? What do you make of inflation and how to survive and invest in an inflationary environment? And more on the Money Vikings podcast number 59. Bob and Jerry, how are you doing with prices these days? Dude, pickles, man. Pickles, they kill me. They kill yeah, me. I, I picture it's like a Shakespearean line, except instead of holding up a skull, you're holding uh, pickles. Oh, yeah. I love yeah. I actually love oh, that visual. So Bob, that could, so that could be a pretty cool cartoon <laughs> of oh, me yeah. holding a jar of pickles. It's so Shakespearean, the way you wrote pondering, it. Pondering, pondering life. Oh, pondering inflation. Pondering inflation. Uh, well, Absolutely. it's, you know, Warren, Warren Buffett calls it a great tapeworm. So <laughs> that's not a, you, no, nothing wants to be called a great tapeworm. Uh, no, I don't true. think it's a compliment. I don't uh, think yeah, it's a compliment. I'm curious. I'm very curious. It's not good. It just sort of uh, eats away at the value of our dollars, huh? It does. It eats does. away at our dollars. Uh, so it's it's. We're going to get a lot into this into the show today because it's inflation focused on how to survive this right now. But yeah, it eats in eats into everything, right? It eats into you as a consumer. It eats into you as an investor. It eats into a per, in, into a business. So it's it's got to be tamed and we'll get into you know the nuts and bolts of that um, as we unwind from the pandemic uh, disruptions but before we do that and dive into news items uh bob do you want to uh, talk about some of the trades that we uh, successfully executed yeah. with our members and yeah we run used, us through a couple of those the past couple of weeks have been it's been pretty interesting we had some insane trades come directly from members themselves just doing kind of an evaluation of the market with like Zillow and we had something else with Penn Gaming where uh, we had pretty massive um, returns ranging from like 700% to like 6,000%. And I know that's not the everyday huh. and I don't want people to get the idea like that's the market, but there were, they were some pretty insane plays. But <laughs> things that we did in this past week, we had Roblox that, that started taking off. So played some, you know, played some calls there. Uh, got 200% return on that. Nice. Um, Tilray's is, uh, you know, the cannabis uh, kind of sector segment is is seeing some movement with uh, stuff around uh, some legislative uh, bills that are on the table. So played Tilray um, this past week, uh, bought some calls and sold them, you know, uh, very, I think it was the very same day. Uh, it was 31%. Uh, profit. No, next day it was uh, sold it for thirty one percent profit. Um, we did a, a kind of a play going into the earnings at Disney, where we uh, we bought uh, and sold that uh, over the course of a week for one hundred sixteen percent profit. And then um, you know MVIS, we know it's getting very manipulated. Um, so what what, some, what ticker is that? Uh, it's a new one. Uh, oh, I just found. Cool. Yeah, okay. you heard of it? Uh, uh -huh. Microvision. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh, old joke for those. Old joke actually. for those that that uh, <laughs> uh, don't know what we're talking about. Um, okay. uh, but did some puts actually on on Microvision, and uh, nice. over the course of a night, uh, made two hundred percent profit on uh, two hundred fifty percent profit on that. It's just so, investing. People don't hate anyone. Okay? Just right. It's, just it's not. It's not it's your sports team. Not personal. It's not a sports team. It's not a family member. It's a yeah. Sorry. Freaking <laughs> investment. Okay, sorry. Just just saying. It's a vessel to make money. Yeah. Yeah, so wow. that's 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 just a few. I mean, we had some, some stuff uh, losers in there and, and some other winners, but uh, those are the big ones that kind of stand out. So, if someone would want to join a premium membership, they could uh, use TMV Listen to that's get right. a discount, and yeah. they could join in on all the fun each week. Yeah, so that would give them the thirty percent off the first month, and and go from there. But it's uh, yeah, TMV Listen. Give it a shot. I like yeah. it. Sweet. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So, guys, I got I got to share this. I, we, we, we always like to do a little news section in the beginning, but I got to share. I just I, I love I'm I every day, man. Do you guys like Kevin O'Leary, Shark Tank guy? Like I, I do. He's really yeah. fun to listen to. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's he's so I, and I, I, I he might be I don't know if he's a controversial figure or not, but I don't know. I like I, I like listening to him. I like his quotes. I, I'm, I may not agree with everything, but 
um, I got to read you a couple of these quotes that I read uh, that he just made. So he said, um, he said, if you print three point five trillion dollars, put it in a helicopter and throw it down into the country. You're darn right. The stock market will go up and so will the wine market, the watch market, the car market. You could have written right. the pickle market. Right. Um, and hard assets will explode to the upside because money is free. Yes. Ah. Oh, yes. Wasn't that, that perfect sense. for our inflation show? Yes. That's a good, it's a good yes. uh, mental visual there. I, uh, oh, I actually, God. I actually checked with him first before we did our show. That's why he kind of put oh, that yeah? out there. So, oh, you yeah. did. Yeah. Go, yeah. Oh, you yeah. and Kevin. Yeah. You Bob. guys are Kevin. Hey, dude, yeah. dude, we yeah. play guitar. We, we talk about classic cars <laughs> together and all sorts of stuff. So it's good. Another thing about him, he's going, he's going, uh, he's still pushing out on uh, crypto and going, uh, I think he's upping his assets uh exposure to like eight or ten percent of his overall mm. portfolio now the guy's wow. got a gazillionaire or so um yeah, that's yeah. like yeah yeah, yeah. I know. a few billion so you know if he loses that no big deal <laughs> well i'm you know, okay but... with the other seven billion <laughs> <You're> right <laughs> but they say I mean, I, it, there's a lot of kind of um uh i guess speculation or arguments around crypto being the you know one of the new hedges against it we've talked Don't about steal the thunder from the inflation oh. section hello Shh. It's coming, Bob. It's coming. <laughs> okay, the next, the next Kevin O'Leary quote. <laughs> um, this is great. This is on, on uh, office workers, which is about, I think it's about 40% of the, 60% of the workforce, you have to do the job on site. There's no such thing as working from home. But there is 40% of the workforce that can eligibly work from home. And uh, that's a lot of people. I mean, 40% that's of the workforce lot. is a lot yeah. of people. Uh, he says they're never coming back. They have proven they can use technology to do their job successfully, creatively, and functionally. They're mm -hmm. never coming back. So there you go. That's yeah. a little one for the work from home crowd. I believe it. Uh, yeah, there's a there's a great yeah. resignation going on, right? Yeah. That, uh, apparently, yeah. I mean, that's what's so weird. And we're going to get into it in this show here, Jerry, with the inflation. There's just, and I know you guys, I don't know if you guys feel this way, but there's so many strange things going on all at the same time, right? Like yeah. it's... It's, it reminds me of that old quote, like the best of times and worst of times. And the reason I say that is because for all objective measures, the economy is doing great. I right. mean, bu businesses are blowing. A lot of businesses are blowing, are doing really well with profits. Um, assets, people that have been in the stock market for the last 10 years have, have all time high investment accounts. People that have owned real estate for the last whatever years have all time high real estate. I mean, it's this weird thing. If, if a person wants a job, apparently there's tons of jobs, but a bunch of people are resigning. I don't know. And we've, we've been debating this. Are they, are they trading? Uh, are they day trading? Um, maybe they're so, joining Mighty Vikings. Yeah. yeah. Or they're, uh, <laughs> I mean, they're finding new jobs and getting raises too. Well, well I, I but I, but I think, I think Greg, you touched on it is that uh, a lot of people uh, during the pandemic that started playing around the stock market, um, got a taste of something that is uh, unnatural. The, mar the market movement was actually kind of unnatural and it rewarded a lot of people. And I think they've now taken a step in that direction and stayed in that direction um, mm. with investing and trading and, and whatnot. And that's where they're at. They're like, why go back to a, a job where I can work 40 hour weeks and maybe make you know a few hundred dollars a week, maybe $800 a week where I could, you Making know, it a day. right. I can gamble, at, I can gamble and, and make that, I don't want to say the gambling, but I can make that in the first uh, 30 minutes of the morning of the bell and I'm good going my merry way. You yeah. know, I, I would to love to see, have your margarita, right? I would love to see some statistics and find out what's really going on. Cause Absolutely. I haven't figured it out totally. And I've been trying to track it. So, yeah. Um, but some of those people might have to go back to their jobs because our show's about inflation. So let's do yes. it. You ready for this? Let's mm -hmm. Give it to me. Okay, I wish we had some like the intro music for inflation, like really scary music. Yeah, like, or a balloon, or just a balloon. Maybe, being blown maybe up. our intern, maybe our intern can uh, do that. Yeah. In post. add some add some frightening uh, <laughs> music or something. But <laughs> all right, so I think the first question is, what is inflation? Okay, what is inflation? Yeah, hmm. in, inflate. Good question, Jerry. Infl <laughs> inflation. <laughs> inflation is the decline of purchasing power of a given currency over time. Right. It's yeah. a quantitative estimate of the rate at which the decline in purchasing power occurs. It's mm -hmm. basically, so they use it as an average of over like a basket of goods, right? They're mm -hmm. looking at all kinds of things from meat 
to milk, to cars, to houses, to gasoline uh, and all this kind of stuff. And basically what they're finding is that it's, it's shooting up really uh, high right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, th- I think the numbers are like 6% uh, plus yeah, at the moment. That, right. And what, what my understanding is that we, and, and especially, well, at least in the United States, we are kind of jarred by this because we have been in a 40 year golden period. This is what most people don't realize. We've been in a 40 year Goldilocks period yeah. when, because inflation is not necessarily bad. You want a little bit of inflation because that means your economy is growing. Now, when it gets out of control, that's bad. But if but we've been doing about 2% inflation for 40 years. And that basically has just meant that our economy has just been humming along in a very healthy state. Right. Um, but obviously, the pandemic came. And I think, you know, my non, you know, economist hat here, but um, it seems like the 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 wheels and the gears of the global economy got completely gummed up okay so that was the first thing then the second thing is people got massive amounts of stimulation in terms of cash infusions and all kinds of stuff during the pandemic well americans spent that money like crazy they went out and went nuts on home improvement projects and amazon orders and the 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 spending and the buying stock market yeah. The stock market. Yeah. They, they, like they, people just went out and bought, 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 buy, 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 buy. And so that kind of like backed things up even more where the system could not catch up and that drives prices up. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, now, many analysts are predicting that it will come down in about a year when the supply chain issues have been resolved, but we don't know, you know, w- when you're in the thick of it and you're paying high prices for everything, you're kind of feeling like your purchasing power is eroding every week. Yeah. So it's really not fun. Um, now, I will I will say this, and this is something um, maybe we can do. Uh, Jerry's you know, put this up with show notes or something like that is um, I actually did a, a charting comparison um, between because this is something that I, that I had spotted uh, some analysts had put out a while ago um, and I was able to recreate it. But uh there are points in like 30 some odd years ago that appear to be almost perfectly aligning with what we have seen for the past almost 20 years, the past 10 years. And so it's giving an idea of like, um, uh, actually, no, it would be 40 years ago, man. Um, it's just showing that there seems to be a cycle or a pattern that we're going to be repeating. And it's, pointing to possibly August of 2024 is when we see a bigger correction or pullback. So we're talking about, over, you know, over a year from now. Pull, pull back in um, the in, in the rate of inflation is what you're saying? In the market itself. Oh, so oh, we talk oh. about, we talk about the inflation, how okay. it's impacting the market. So yeah. I just want you, you know, the picture of, we talk about this right now and imminent, you know, uh, uh, danger where it actually may not be for a couple of years that we that, see. Yeah, you're right. I think you're on it, Bob. And it's it's been very um, mind boggling as an investor as to right. how to navigate this. And we'll, you know, we'll, we'll dive more into that. But listen to some of these guys. They're actually pretty shocking. I mean, uh, energy commodities up 49% it's crazy. in the last 12 months. Um, fuel up 59%. Um, utilities up 28%. This, used cars and trucks up 26%. I mean, this is bad. We we have been used to things like healthcare in America and uh, educations costing way more than they used to. I mean, mm-hmm. a lot of our generation, millennials, we got hit with huge sticker shock on things that past generations paid much less for, yeah. uh, relatively speaking. Um, but now it just seems like everything's uh, inflating. Right. Yeah. So right. It's. <clears throat> Yeah, gas seems to be the the biggest. Maybe oil, forty nine point six percent increase in in gasoline. It's, it's crazy. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. Um, are you enjoying your electric vehicle? Very much. So. <laughs> I was gonna say you never you haven't stopped at a gas station in years. So good on you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What's a gas station? What yeah. is that? What are these words? Uh, well, it's <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about Rivian. We're gonna talk about Re- Rivian Ooh, later. So a gas yes. station might be a thing of the past in. Uh, in yeah. uh in the next 10 years oh yeah um 
So it's a, so let's talk about how we uh, how let's let's try to hone in on how we invest in an inflationary environment, as Bob's kind of alluding to. So um, stocks have been doing great. Right. All time highs. Yeah. Uh, stocks you, are the ultimate inflation hedge, aren't they? Yeah. Well, that's Sounds like that's it. the irony here. <laughs> Past you know, people, years. <laughs> yeah, that's the irony. I mean, stocks seem to be continue to do well. Um, I mean, so w- here's a couple strategies I, I, we've we've picked up. One is called okay. You were asking about this earlier, Jerry. A barbell strategy. Okay, that's when I that's when an investor goes long and short at the same time which you're familiar with, with your options trading, mm-hmm. right? You mm-hmm. have certain positions where you're going to go long and short, um, but not intermediate. And so um, I think the idea is go long on value, go long on quality, mm-hmm. um, but then uh, have short positions uh, to kind of balance that out. I'm probably not explaining this very well, um, but... It's kind of like an iron pumping condor. <laughs> iron pumping condor yes, yes there you yes. go mm-hmm. there you go <laughs> i don't know i mean i i'm you guys know me i mean my big thing is i'm trying to i'm just trying to i'm thinking that there's a rotation to value but then i get kathy wood whisper in my ear as she does sometimes and she's saying um you know she's saying no she's like technology is going to get us out of this you know future tech yeah um, my my thoughts are are this so I say this a lot on the shows, but I think it bears repeating. So I've got a long-term retirement portfolio that I'm very happy with, and I'm not actively messing with it and changing things around because, you know, CNBC and NPR are touting inflation is the end of the world. And, and you know, you know, what, what are we going to do? And we're not all shifting all our investments around and putting it all in gold or you know, digging holes in the backyard and burying bars of gold down there. That's like, <laughs> you know, the typical inflation hedge is gold. But what I do like to do is, you know, so I, I sort of put that long-term portfolio B, just leave it alone. It's going to go up. It's going to go down over time. But ultimately, since, you know, the beginning of the stock market, it's proven to to go up. Uh, right. The short term, though, I'm, I'm looking for trends that can benefit from inflation, like uh, some of the trades we've been doing short term in yeah. um, in gold, gold miners, copper, copper miners, all those commodities. I'm looking at, you know, oil hitting 80, although that may not uh, continue. Uh, but but a lot of the commodities, I mean, those are kind of the typical inflation hedges that you hear about. And if those are going to be going up over the short term as people react to the news about it. Uh, there may be some opportunities in there for the yeah. shorter medium term. Yeah, I we, think we've, been, just, we've been we've been doing well. Ex- yeah, go ahead, Bob. Oh, sorry, I was gonna say we've been doing well with that GD, you know, GDX, right? That's the that's one of the tickers that we've been we've been playing that one for the past couple of weeks now, and that's a lot of it has to do with the the mining. Yeah, you know, gold. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's really interesting, guys. Yeah, and I, I think you actually just described the barbell strategy better than I did. <laughs> you've, got, you've got your one end of the barbell is like you just said. You've got your long term, well uh, developed portfolio that's um, constructed the way you see fit for for a long, the long term, and you're really not doing much over there. Okay, yeah, right. Because a lot of these things are transitory. Now it doesn't it doesn't feel good for the year or two you're trying to get through it. But a year or two is still transitory in the grand scheme of decades of life. Right. Yeah. Um, right. So, yeah. so you, you know, you got to keep that in. But then you, on the other end, you've got you, you're you're utilizing short term tools to kind of adapt to the times. Um, I would say, in a way, I'm doing similar things. I'm doing it a little differently. I mean, I I am, I am kind of going into like the Bitcoin thing, and I'm thinking that that is proving itself to be some kind of store of value right now. And uh, I don't know. It's definitely a store of value. uh, I think you're making the argument it's, it's an inflation hedge. I think that, I think so as the digital gold concept. I think somebody said something about Kevin O'Leary and Bitcoin. It's just resonating. It's weird. He did. He did. (laughs) I don't don't disagree with Kevin very often. I mean, the guy's kind of, I don't know. He's a billionaire for a reason. I, you know, it, it seems like it is, and I'm sorry, Jerry, okay, yeah, I, I'm sorry. Uh, it, it makes sense though, if that's a place where people are going to put money because it's not going to have the regulations 
that your normal market would deal with in a way. That's just how I feel about it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Sorry. Interesting. Jerry. No, 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 no. That's yeah. I was just saying Bitcoin is, is extremely high right now. It, it hit a high, I believe of somewhere around $68,000 at the, mm -hmm. the recording it's 64.6 thousand, yeah. but uh, it's, it's looking good. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not putting my life savings in it by any means. And I know Greg likes one to 2% of assets and um, cryptos that uh, solve some problems like ETH. And, you know, I think it's a great place to like in the, in the time we live in now, it seems like a reasonable place to put, uh, put some money on the side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the other thing I would add to this whole inflation thing and how to invest in this environment is I, I like where you're going, Jerry, where you said you're not making any like radical changes. Um, but I, I still continue to like thinking long term in terms of the macro trends, right? The mega trends. And I just think that, again, if you're talking about like the jar of pickles and the gas and everything's really expensive right now. Well, you guys know how this stuff goes. I mean, two and a half, you know, two years from now, we could we'll barely even remember this or we won't even be talking about it. But at the same time, things that are like decades long trends, like renewable energy, EVs, artificial intelligence, I guess the metaverse now, I mean, those things space, right? Those mm -hmm. things are going to continue plugging along. Right. Yeah. And so there'd be nothing wrong in my mind where, and I'm doing the same thing with putting our money into places like that. And again, with just the concept that I'm not going to really be worried about, you know, what's going to happen in the next two years. I'm thinking but, five, six, seven, you know. And, yeah. and are these macro trends that you're talking about, would you be, are you aggress are you more aggressively investing in them now because of the inflation story or would you be doing that anyways? I'm I'd just be, curious yeah, how much a, inflation pay, you know, plays into this. Yeah, that's a good question. I'd be doing it anyway okay. because I just think that those are the big, you know, you're always trying to find like the next big area of growth, right? Like there's certain things that have matured Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's kind of like what we, why we all, I think a lot of us piled into Rivian last week. I mean, you know, Tesla has kind of matured. And so everyone's kind of like, well, what's, who's the next Tesla? I don't know if Rivian is, but it seems to have potential. Yeah. Um, I, so. I will say here, I, I will say if you bring that up is um, interestingly enough, uh, Tesla. So Elon Musk is very, has been talking a lot lately about, um, uh, Tesla venturing into the um, HVAC air conditioning units mm -hmm. for the home because they already create super efficient cab filters for their cars. And with it's, it's their kind of moving in that space of energy efficiency, reducing carbon footprint and whatnot. They do the batteries, they do the storage, they do, um, uh, they do the filters in their vehicles. And he has actually talked about the, um, the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. So for those that don't know what HVAC is, um, your AC unit at your house, creating them where they are stackable. There's, uh, you know, uh, I won't get too deep into it, but you, they call them ton, one ton unit or ton units, right? Mm -hmm. um, creating them all in one ton units where, you know, some houses that are bigger need like four or five ton units. So you just stack a bunch of one ton units together to make, you know, to make that, uh, work efficiently for the home. Um, but it's like your house, buddy, you need like 10 tons over 10, there. 10, 10, 10 I'll units for thing. the, uh, yeah. <laughs> The that's, mansion. that's really cool i mean i knew yeah, they were really doing cool. solar and solar all, all uh, kinds of stuff energy pack uh, yeah yeah they're not really just a car company so yeah you know many, many argue it's not totally fair to compare them with rivian or gm or right. others but uh i had not heard about the hvac i just yeah. googled it and, and yes you are not lying there actually is a uh a photo of elon holding up some sort of uh hvac thing <laughs> this that's is back really in cool. june this is back uh, in june yeah. I didn't know that either, Bob, and uh, I'm glad you keep a lot of secrets before the show. Is, um, <laughs> but uh, um, no, no, that, that that that's really cool because I know I know first. for I know for renewable energy and the future of that kind of stuff. I know that HVAC systems are a big uh, part of this. I mean, let, let's think about this. Where are people? Everybody in the country is moving to hot areas. Like everybody's moving to Texas and to Arizona. Right. Okay. Right. Well, those places get very very hot. I mean, you can't live there unless you have a lot of um, HVAC units. 
And I've, I've looked into investing in train, right, f yeah. for, for, for a while because of that. But these systems have to become more efficient because they, they're, they emit, they use a lot of energy. They're energy intensive. Oh. But pe people aren't going to be able to live in these areas without them. So that's it, pretty cool. Here's, here's a little extra icing on the cake here is that uh, something he was talking about is that, you know, if somebody had a Tesla vehicle and they have the Tesla, you know, the whole Tesla system at home, that because of um, like geosynchronization, that if somebody was out and about shopping or doing whatever, when they're starting to make their commute home, the system would then recognize the vehicle and, and whatever, if they're doing their autopilot drive home within a certain radius, like distance from the house, it would immediately cook, uh, yeah. kick on the AC unit to start cooling down the home. So it's not always running. And that's this is amazing. Energy efficiency, oh, my nest, right? My nest does that today. Oh, nice. Wow. Sorry to, sorry to burst your bubble. I, that is hey, cool. Burst my bubble. <laughs> I, I, like I, I want the Tesla home. I just want a Tesla I do, house. seriously, right? That's so cool. Yeah, I want a Tesla home. Yeah, that is, wow. That is so, that's so great. I, one of my favorite, uh, just, just to close the loop on the HVAC stuff, I, I love carrier system symbol, yes. C-A-R-R. I've been selling covered calls on that. My wife recommended it and it has done really well. I'm selling out of the money calls. Haven't had to sell it yet. So I'm just holding it, collecting dividends, getting premium from the calls. And uh, awesome. yeah, not a lot of work. Just, you know, every month or two. Just, yeah, exactly. Wow. So I that's, a, that's carrier. The, uh, they make HVAC as well. Like yeah. Train. Yeah. It's and like that is actually, and yeah. And that's actually in my retirement account. That's working great. Yeah. I need Man. to add more. This is crazy, guys. HVAC. We're going to keep you guys cool in this hot um, fall. This hot market. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> hot market. Yeah. Okay. Well, speaking of hot markets, the last thing that we were going to talk about in terms of inflation is obviously real estate, right? That's been a classic um, yeah. hedge against inflation. Um, so I don't know. I, it's physical assets. Right? Yeah. And this is, this is where I, I um, and this is where it's that weird, funky time. Um. You know, we real estate is is kind of something uh, we've always loved I, on a personal level. Uh, I know Greg and I can talk about that uh, and Jerry too, but it's like you know that's kind of what we grew up with. And uh, even with markets that are that are potentially down, markets are going to look bad. Even if it's a, I know it's not weird to say, but even in a housing market where there's a bubble. Um, just knowing how to play it right, knowing that if you're adding to the portfolio, you're using them as rentals where it's that passive income, no matter the market, market could be collapsing or it's a housing market issue. Um, it's, it's inflation issues, um, housing, owning property and, and finding the ways to use the power of the property is great in those markets. Yeah. Um, now I will say, <laughs> talking about the stuff in the news with like Evergrande, and you know stuff going on with Zillow, uh, you know they they reduced their workforce by twenty five percent, flooding mm -hmm. houses back into the market because it was that that was losing money. Um, you know we have to think about okay what impact is that going to have in the housing market right now, but there's opportunities we shall see we shall, shall see. see but yeah you're right i mean and then unfortunately for for renting i mean as inflation goes up so does um rent yeah so yeah. you know if you're on the other side of that and you have a fixed mortgage well the the rental the rental price is going up but your you know your uh what you owe on or what you pay every month on that property is is yeah. not so um is the zillow effect having an impact on a certain part of the country more than it's others? gonna see this is the thing is that i would i would imagine is it, it definitely would have to be region specific because i know um arizona had a big hit in their housing market in uh california there was like seventy thousand homes that they had released back to the market at a like a discount from when they bought them yeah um so I, and, yeah i yeah. still don't see i i mean i'm maybe i'm not seeing it but i'm still not seeing this actually affect the real estate market because i think people are missing that zillow is a technology company right so right it's so they are not a real estate company they i guess they were trying to be or something or trying to be a whole i don't know what they're trying yeah. to flip houses um so my, my fear is that the result of all this is going to be an increased regulation it's kind of oh, fallout, yeah. you, know? Yeah. you know, they're going to try and prevent this from happening and, and, and 
put all kinds of regulation if, if it places. gets to that yeah if it gets to that point it makes sense yeah absolutely but yeah. I don't know. we're getting off topic here aren't we no, no. no it's <laughs> okay it's okay it's, it's it. fun it's all it's all interesting it's all interesting yeah. um so we were gonna do uh we're, we were gonna do a little bit of a deep dive on rivian i think it's worth worth doing that for a few minutes um sure. guys yeah. yeah so here's the deal i mean the, the reality is we've talked a lot about evs on our podcast and our our site and and, and in terms of investing and in, we've been long-term tesla investors but by 2025 EVs will be less expensive in the showroom than any other car. Yeah. So I, all I have to say is I've had several people anecdotally that I've run into, and, and these are just, these are people like me, just normal people living their lives, middle-class folks. And they've just told me, you know, EV mass adoption, it's, it's here now. It's not the yeah. future. It's the now. I mean, it's happening right before our eyes. Right. Um, and it's, it's going to continue on. I know my next car is going to be an EV. Um, I'm going to give it a try. Um, but anyway, the, the Rivian IPO, we got in on that. And uh, yeah. so far, I've been pretty happy. <laughs> Very well. I, I, I think it's going to be one um, of those IPOs. It, it's going to be, I think it's going to be one of those IPOs that actually, um, you know, doesn't just, in personal feeling, right? Fizzle. Fizzle. I'm, not, I'm not an investment or financial advisor. But, <laughs> but okay. what I'm saying, like a lot of the IPOs you see, they do that spike and that run up. Everybody's, you know, it's that mo momentum, that FOMO. And then you have... You know, the, you have the bigger money. That's like, hey, I'm making money and profit. I'm I'm selling, getting out, and they they dump a lot, and it just starts crashing. Mm -hmm. Where, because Rivian has backing from Amazon, from Ford, um, Saudi money. There's there's a lot of high profile interest in this, and and they've been doing a great job at um, kind of campaigning and 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 selling and advertising. I, I've seen mm -hmm. a lot of videos lately on the quality of the vehicle. And it's, you know, the truck is, is like a, like a Ford Tacoma, that mid, you know, small, small mid, uh, size, you know, uh, truck, uh, EV. So it's like, that's the market that it's in. It's not trying to compete with like the cyber trucks and the F one fifties and the, the Hummer, you know, that, that are going to be coming out. Is it's it a be... luxury car or is it like more of fleet type of car? It's this is the thing is because they have they have stated like the design of it is like intended to go out in the wilderness. They want people to be lost and mm -hmm. like with this vehicle and that doesn't scream luxury to me. Right. Cause I, <laughs> right, I, I mean, nobody's well, you guys take are a luxury vehicle off road. <laughs> so I was, I was talking with a buddy of mine about it yesterday and he's a, he's a truck guy. They mm -hmm. like to go out and go camping and stuff. And he was, is totally enamored with it. And yeah. I was like, wow, I said, I was like, they're onto something here when I was talking to my friend because, uh, because I, he was telling me, he's like, yeah, he's like, I wouldn't mind buying a Tesla, but he's like, I wouldn't want to scuff it up or anything. I'd want right. it to be really nice. And then he said, and then he said, he made the comment. He said, yeah. And he's like, he's like, the Tesla truck was a little too weird for him. He was, like, <laughs> yeah. was kind of like, yeah, I mean, I, I get this dystopian future and you know, it's the year 2045 and escape from New York. But he's like, he's like, nah, he's like, I don't know. He's like, my life's pretty good. Um, I don't know. <laughs> hey, when I come pulling up in my Cybertruck, he and I can compare the Rivian to the Cybertruck. We'll be yeah. Fine. No, yeah. I mean, you know, and I'm sure a lot of times with these things, you know, this Bob, because you're, you do design work, but I mean, a lot of times design elements try to push boundaries in the concept stage. Right. And by the time it hits mass production they've toned it down they you know, have they've, they've, different yeah yeah they've made it into kind of like hey everybody's gonna buy this thing but it has you know a signature style i don't um, and i don't so. when it comes to when we're talking about cybertruck i don't know how much will change be different because you know they've been very very upfront about hey when you're when you're dealing with cold rolled steel you have to do there's there's a process where you kind of have to break a seam to bend and fold you can't create curves with cold rolled steel Mm -hmm. And that's just by the nature of the integrity of it. See, that's so, just, so that's, just, uh, see, that's where I'm going to tell you. I, I, that's where it's just too much for me. I, so I have the same <laughs> feeling about the, the Model X, okay? I, right. I would really like a Model Y. And I'll tell you one of the main reasons. I don't want the Falcon doors in real life, okay? I, I love the <laughs> idea, idea of the fantasy. I love the idea of being Batman, but I'm not really Batman. Yeah. I'm, you know, a middle-class dad that has to get people around. So I want doors that just Love open. It. You know Love what I'm saying? It. Well, yeah. they do. They do just open. They just open up. Yeah. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm not buying them. I'm not buying the Falcon doors. But, it, but, but this is what I'm saying with that truck <laughs> is when when you have people that like their trucks and their vehicles, and maybe they are the everyday drivers, but they also do construction or something like that. They're working off site. 
you know, I've seen some pretty nasty torn up trucks that are panels bashed in and destroyed and it's their everyday driver. And you're like, ah, where this in a way kind of solves for that because, because of it being steel, it doesn't necessarily ding as easily. You know, okay, so I just, are you, are you pushing for the cyber truck or for Rivian right now? Oh, I'm buying the cyber truck. Okay. But cool. I, I'm, what I will say, <laughs> I know Rivian is going to be the disruptor because it is the yeah. small, it is the small, they are in that category because there is nobody else competing right now, really in the small truck space, the yeah. SUV space. They're onto um, something, aren't they? Yeah, they really are. Yeah. So let me ask you a question, Bob or Greg, what if some of our listeners did not participate in the Rivian IPO, but are still anxious mm. in, uh, you know, participating the, in the opportunity. In, in, yeah. What's the best, uh, what's the best way to do it? Would you wait for a pullback? Uh, is there an option strategy that uh, might work? No options yet for Rivian that I've seen. No options for Rivian yeah, yet. Okay. Not, it usually takes yet. a week or two to, to get those. It, uh, yeah. There needs adding. to be enough volume and, and stuff behind it. So what I'll say is this, because there's not enough chart history on a daily, right? You know, daily, weekly, yeah. monthly, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I've been charting this thing off of like one minute up to one hour uh, charts to kind of get a sense of where it's going and what it's doing. Yeah. Um, I have not, I, it, I have not found many, I have not found many opportunities yet where there's like a significant pullback to say like, Hey, uh, this is your opportunity. It's it, because it's only been doing natural yeah. retracements that it, because being overstressed and naturally pulling back to a level to where it just going to keep going. Yeah. Um, looking at this chart like i'm i'm on a one hour time frame right now i'm using extended hours trading you pretty much have a support trend line that is barely getting shifted away from and it's it's going pretty radical um where right now i'd be long it right you'd long you'd i i long. oh i'm absolutely long you just long. hold on to it yeah yeah and, and that's the thing is i mean i don't want people to get me wrong uh I, this is in my investment portfolio, pretty, pretty sizable position. And, but it's, it's just something where it's a hold when okay. you have moments in time where maybe it does do some, some natural larger, you know, longer term pullback and correction, um, consolidation, I'll mm-hmm. be, you know, sifting into position. But I, I, one of our members, I use this as an example and Tesla did this too, but it was back in like in the seventies, if you dropped a, a grand on Ford because of them doing stock splits to, so you, you had a bunch of, um, uh, you know, how do I say it? Uh, a dilution in, in the, in the share price. Right. Cause the question was like, how come Ford stock price isn't so high compared to mm-hmm. Tesla? Well, yeah, you bought a thousand dollars back in the seventies. They actually had so much uh, going on with dilution and stock splits that your thousand dollars would now be two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars now mm-hmm. over the course of I know it's like forty or fifty years, but that being said, you know Tesla did what was it a five to one split last year, mm-hmm. and they've gone up how much in that time? Mm-hmm. You know Rivian getting in now. Say you drop a grand or you know whatever it is, maybe you buy a few shares, just hold it. Don't even worry about it. What is that going to look like in five years? Was it yeah, like in 10 we'll years? Right? We'll see. I think I do think it's going to have its dips because I think they're going to have Absolutely. a rocky road, right? Absolutely. It's, yep. it's going to be a rocky road. This is yep. These things are never like, it's never like a pure like golden, like, oh my gosh, everything right. went well with the supply chain. Everything went well with setting up the factories. Everything's going, it's always like, oh, there's a delay. The factory isn't working. There's always this something. challenge and that. Yeah, there's going to be a bunch of stuff like yeah. that, I think. And this thing's going to go, uh, I think it'll go down again. Yeah, I did. I mean, I'm a little different from both of you. I went in on probably a few hours after it IPO'd and I got in around 100 and then nice. wrote it up to about 130 and then got out. Now I'm waiting for the next pullback. So future will tell if, you know, I'm uh, correct or not on that. And then <laughs> maybe I'd add more. And I was thinking of an option strategy as well. When options come around, this yeah. seems like it would be perfect for one of those uh, risk reversal call spreads. 
So you like sell a, a put, price. say at a hundred. So you're like, okay, I, I will pick up a hundred shares at a hundred dollars of Rivian. No problem. Sign yeah. me up. Right? right. Cause that'll never happen again. According to right. the way we're all talking. Right. But right. if it continues to go up, you also buy that uh, like an upside call or a call spread yeah. uh, that you can pay for by selling that put, but we don't have options yet. So that's not a possibility until yeah. maybe next week or later this week. We'll see. You'll see what happens because that's that's, awesome. that's going to be a huge one to uh, to get on some options opportunities with uh, when mm -hmm. this become available. I, I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. Well, guys, good stuff. Um, can I throw out one last inflation related thing that's going to be very unpopular? Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> Okay. Bring it. I, this is going to sound so uh, antithetical to um, the societies we live in and are part of in the modern times we're in. But, you know, maybe we should consider buying less for a while. And the reason mm, I say that is yes. because we tend to buy. This is American society. I know we're consumers by nature. I know it's the heart of what we do. It's capitalist all the way and it's buy, 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 get as much as you can. <laughs> right, but, you right. know, maybe sometimes if you look around your house, I know I look around mine and you know what? I have enough stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I'm the only one that has enough stuff. I, yeah. I like new stuff, but maybe for a while, guys, we just, you know, buy a few less things and you know what? Yeah. You'll save money. You'll put that money in savings um, and it'll give time for the supply chain to smooth out. Because that's what a lot of a lot of what creates this is that, again, the consumer has gone me too, all of us we've gone nuts. We've completely yeah. we're just constantly clicking on things and grabbing stuff and buying it. And are we really thinking through our frugality habits? You know, I, you know, um, Greg, so that's not going to be popular, but I had to say it. But here's the thing is we we I don't know if you guys remember this. We talked about this long time ago. I think it was like a, over a year ago. We talked about this social media plays such a big role with people. And so when you have sort of envious of someone on a platform like Facebook, or I'm sorry, Meta, or, you know, Instagram, Twitter, and, and they're like, it's that glitz and glamour image that's being put out there. And they're like, I want that. So Bob, you're gonna, absolutely right. Keeping right? up with the, it's keeping up keeping with up the, the Joneses, Joneses is, is on steroids, version. right? Now. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's, everybody sees that's what it. everybody else in their neighborhood or in their social circle uh, or on social media has, right? And uh, then they're getting, yeah, no, I know what you mean, man. And, it's and, and, and it's an arms thing. race and it's a never ending. Absolutely. <laughs> and the sad thing is this. And the sad thing is this. Here, guys, here's the secret. Here's the secret. Get close to the speakers. Nobody cares. No, they don't. At all. No. It's like I have kids, I have I have wife, family, like to to worry about my I have my little hive here. Yeah. I'm sorry, but I don't give a care about if somebody else is driving around their Lamborghini showing off their Rolex and the Do your kids the, need another toy? No, oh my god, no. They need cardboard <laughs> boxes to play with. I mean yeah. like it's like yeah, people. Uh, oh, I'm enjoying my Hawaiian is... sunset drinking. Like, oh, okay, cool. That's fun. That's great. But you know, I got other things to worry about. All I'm asking yeah. people is to think about what we're saying here because yeah. I, I know it's not popular. People don't like to hear this. They don't like to hear about frugality. They don't like to be told don't buy the, you know, the expensive coffee. Don't go, but you know, because we're a buy. It's a buy, buy, buy world, never ending. You know, yeah. but really think about it. Do you have enough? Are you? Is it? And when you're buying that next thing. Are you really buying it because you need it and you really want it? Or is it just like, is it entertainment or is it an impulse? You know, yeah. what are we, what are we doing? Like stop and think. It's all I'm saying. It's all I'm saying. You know, I, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'll, I'll say, sorry, last thing and I'll shut my mouth, but I, there are some platforms out there and, and groups that do this kind of wealth building stuff like what we do, but there are these, these ones that are led by very wealthy people and they want to show that off you know, the nice cars that they have and the things that they were able to buy with all this money they made. And my argument to that is where it's sad is you've now just disconnected yourself from the people that are trying to learn from you mm -hmm. because you've set yourself at a different level of reality mm -hmm. and they're going to try to do whatever they can to get there as fast as they can. And they're going to now lose it all because of that. And a lot of, a lot of that behavior for most people is, is wealth destruction. Yes. For most yeah. people, for most of us with normal job. Hey, I get it. If you're, if you're pulling in 500, you know, thousand a year, a couple million a year, I get it. Go nuts, whatever. <laughs> cool. But if you have, if, if you like the rest of us, if you have normal, 
middle class or maybe upper middle class, you know, kind of like good, you know, solid jobs. Uh, right. we, we have to be different. We have to build yeah. wealth in a different way. We, you know, it's not, it's not Lambos and, and you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And it, it, but so. it, it, to that point, this is, it's exactly why, you know, none of us, you know, Gray Jerry and myself, like we're, we're throwing anything up about our lives and lifestyles because it's not about that. It's about the wealth building. It's about having control of your money and your finances and ultimately your, your future. It's, it's not about my Rolls Royce, dude. It's just it's not about, dude. I know. Seriously. That, okay. It's right. I don't my, have my butlers. I drive a Toyota. Right yeah. My yeah. butler's at the door right now I, with my champagne I actually, and caviar. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I got I to gotta get going, guys. Yeah, <laughs> I actually, I need I have a call. So, the so, 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 the, the the so our listeners know, I drive a Toyota. <laughs> only owned Hondas, I swear. Oh, I, love I love it. Yeah, it's, oh, but, you man. know, it's, All right, it's guys. stopping your life up. It, I love it. Hey, yeah. any last words? Great show today. No. I'm looking at some stuff for next week. I'm pretty excited about the uh, the cannabis legislation. Honestly, I haven't read too much into it, but it just from looking at the charts of uh, various cannabis uh, ETFs and stocks, looks like they've had a little pop the last few days. I may be late to the game, unfortunately, but I'm looking at the uh, MJ ETF. One of our one of our premium members brought up AgFi, which looks really interesting. Yes. Yeah. AGFY. It's vertical farming. Uh, hmm, stock yeah, yeah that's so awesome. i'm gonna i'm gonna look into that uh, i mentioned this last week retail uh the xrt etf although i mentioned it i didn't personally do anything Me neither in it. I, I, I should have, have. i should oh. have and so yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna look again today at adding a position uh or, or, or tomorrow and then uh yeah pave sort of just sitting Man. around yeah, I don't know. May may add a little more, maybe not. I, I took a one third position in there, so I may may mm -hmm. just kind of monitor that. And then there's some services that uh, you guys may use that you've heard of that look interesting. One is uh, Backblaze. They do uh, consumer uh, backups of uh, desktops, and so they just nice. they're about to IPO or they just IPO'd. Check them out. And then also uh, Duolingo, I think, is going public mm. as well. I like it. Yeah, I like it. You got anything going on? I, we did the infrastructure plays. So I'm uh, taking positions up on a lot of infrastructure stuff. Mine was like Sunrun, stuff like that. So Sunrun had a pullback over a drawn period of time, but they've always been a very powerful competitor in, in the solar space. Yep. And when you talk about infrastructure, solar is a part of it. And so definitely added to position on Sunrun. Tan. Uh, hey, tan. Yeah. Tan was just called out by a few different uh, services I subscribe to. So yeah. That's so I did solar. Um, Solar, so solar is going to be a big one in general. That's, but that's I, ten. Yeah, pave, uh, rail is another one. Um, okay. Yeah, and then the the one that we had had mentioned a while ago, and I'm running a blank right now. I apologize. It's a trucking company. I don't know. JB, JB Hunt. No, it was the one that we were talking about with our members about the uh, the acquisition of all the locations. And I'm running Interesting. a blank. Yeah, I, I totally to forgot. Send it to me. I'll put it in the show notes. Yeah, we'll add it in. But the, the trucking one is, is going to be big because they were talking about how there was a shortage in the trucking aspect, um, uh, the kind of space that was going to be pretty important because you're talking about hauling goods across the state. Like what's, you know, you have trains, trucks, and jets. That's the yeah. way to do it. And then, you know, I know for uh, another another time, we're going to talk about the metaverse, but that's, that's the other thing I've been looking in. So, um, it's early days, so yeah, we got, we got time, but that's oh, exciting. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you very much to all of our uh, listeners and our MVPs for, uh, for listening. Uh, again, if you're not an MVP and you want to be, go to moneyvikings.com and use the uh, coupon code TMVLISTEN for 30% off your first month. We'd love to have you join and uh, talk with you, learn from you, and hopefully uh, you'll learn some stuff from us as well. There it is.